Here's how you can master the new camera control button found on the iPhone 16 series. Let's hit it. Before we get too deep, if you want to keep up to date with all the latest Apple news, consider smashing that subscribe button. The new camera control button, or what we presumed would be called the capture button prior to launch, is this handy touch sensitive button located on the right edge of all four iPhone 16 models. An abbreviated description is that you press the button to open the camera app and press it again to take a photo. But there is so much more to it. First, I want to take a look at the mechanics of the button. Unlike all four other buttons on your iPhone, the camera control is actually a touch sensitive button, kind of like a trackpad. At the same time, it is also a physical button. So you can swipe on it, gently press it, but also push it all the way down for a real click. It's kind of wild. It starts though with that first press. By default, it launches Apple's own stock camera app. Apple has opened this tool up to developers though, which is why you have a choice between several other camera apps. Personally, I have Halide, Moments Pro Camera, and Instagram as options to choose from. Many others are still adding the feature, so be sure to check the App Store for updates to your favorite camera app. You can also set this button to Camera Magnifier or the QR Scanner, or just nothing if you prefer. Once you jump into the stock camera app, press the button again to activate the shutter and take a picture or record a video, depending on the mode your camera is set in. If you press and hold the button, it starts recording video. Super handy to do without having to change modes first. If you gently press on the button, it will open up controls. On my iPhone 16 Pro, I can choose between exposure compensation to make it lighter or darker, depth for portrait shots, zoom level, camera, styles, and tone. Just double soft press the button to move between these controls. When that camera control UI appears on screen, you can slide your finger on the button to make adjustments. Sorry, real quick, I need to pause because my iPhone battery is really low. Fortunately, I have a new set of chargers from this video sponsor, ESR. They just launched their new line of Qi 2 chargers. Lately, I've been carrying around the ESR Qi 2 5000 mAh battery pack. It's super slim at only 15 and a half millimeters, yet it stays cool thanks to its internal sensors that read the temperature and use AI algorithms to keep the battery pack below 99.14 degrees Fahrenheit, so it won't overheat. Heat and speed are a constant battle for these tiny portable chargers. An iPhone 15 Pro will be 84% charged in only 2 hours and 25 minutes. So yeah, it's pretty fast. Plus, the built-in kickstand makes it super convenient to watch content in both portrait and landscape orientations. If you need a stationary charger, I'm really excited about the new ESR 3-in-1 with 15 watt Qi 2 and CryoBoost and a fast charge Apple Watch puck. It's using a new generation of CryoBoost that's more efficient and quieter than before to keep your phone cool and to increase charging speeds. And it's affordable, nearly the same speeds as MagSafe, but for less cash. That same tech is built into its new car charger too. Again, 15 watt magnetic Qi 2 with active cooling CryoBoost. That's extra critical in the car where GPS functionality, the heating vents, or the sun can all cause your phone to heat up. Grab any of these and more of ESR's gear at the link in the description. Alternatively, you can slide on the screen too. This can sometimes be more useful than the button itself, like with the zoom controls. So I just soft press to open the zoom, and when I use the button, I can only go like incrementally. Like the button's not that big, so I have to go a bunch of times. But if I slide on the screen, you can go all the way in or all the way out. The single press, or double press gesture can be a little fickle. So if you find it too difficult, you can jump into settings and adjust it, making it lighter or harder to pull off. This camera control button is just one of many new camera features for the iPhone 16 series. If you want to learn more about the camera features, check out the video that I've linked here. So far, I love the camera control button. There's been no faster way to launch the camera and take a picture just one-handed especially on the iPhone 16 or 16 Pro, since they are the smaller of the two, I can wrap my whole hand around it and I never have to touch the screen. 
It even works when your phone is locked. I'm curious how your mileage has been. If you have an iPhone 16, let me know in the comments what you think of this button, good or meh. The final thing that I wanna to touch on is cases. Since this button is touch sensitive, you need to have a special case to work with it. So far, only a few have added a physical cover for the camera control. The ones that I've seen so far, which is not exhaustive, includes Supcase, Spigen, Otterbox, and of course, Apple itself. Apple actually has a color matched piece of sapphire on the outside of its case with a conductive layer underneath it to pass through your signals to make it work. Third party cases so far have been using copper a lot of times because the sapphire has been very hard to source. At least that's what I'm told. For ones that aren't able to put a cover on there or they didn't for this initial batch, they have cutouts on the side or just a hole in the side of the case. Keep that in consideration when shopping for a case and realize we may see cases adding this button down the line. There may be a whole new round of cases launched in a few months. So that's the new camera control button a whole new way to capture photos and video with your iPhone. It's not always gonna be the most convenient way, like repeatedly zooming or even the photographic style seem to be better done on screen. But for a lot of moments, I like it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, be sure to subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.